in a newly released bombshell filing. Two days ago, for the first time, White House records were made public revealing the fact that Ms. Fannie Willis, the district attorney of Fulton County, was actively meeting with Kamala Harris shortly before the state of Georgia indicted President Trump. This new record, alongside a handful of other records we've been able to acquire, they've allowed us to piece together a timeline of events showing what was actually taking place behind the scenes. Now, mind you, it's not the complete picture, but what it shows is still rather wild. So let's go through it together. To start with, in regards to the RICO case against President Trump over in Georgia, one of the central questions that's been hanging in the air since the very beginning is to what extent were state-level prosecutors coordinating their efforts with the White House? Or in other words, how involved was the White House in prosecuting President Trump over in the state of Georgia? Now, of course, up until today, the official line from both the White House as well as from the Georgia state prosecutors has been that there was no coordination between the two. The White House, they claim that this is a state-level case that they have absolutely nothing to do with. However, over time, evidence has begun to creep up showing otherwise. For instance, some recent court documents, you can see them up on your screen, they show that Mr. Nathan Wade, the lead prosecutor in this Trump case, he met with White House staff, including the White House counsel, on multiple different occasions. In practical terms, this means that Fannie Willis's lead prosecutor in this Trump RICO case, who also happened to be her romantic partner, was charging the taxpayers a cool $2,000 per meeting in order to talk to Joe Biden's White House lawyers about prosecuting Joe Biden's political opponent. However, even though that seems shady on the surface, well, there was always plausible deniability. You could make the argument that even though Nathan Wade was meeting with the White House counsel, well, maybe the Biden administration itself was unaware of it. Perhaps they just did not know that it was happening. And after all, since this was a meeting between two lawyers, maybe there was some underlying legal related matter that needed to be resolved. So in theory, well, you could deny any political motives behind those meetings between Nathan Wade and the White House lawyers. But that's a lot harder to do with this new piece of information, which was just revealed in the Georgia State Senate hearing. During that hearing, which free reference took place two days ago, White House records were presented, showing that just a few months before President Trump was indicted, a meeting took place at the White House between Fannie Willis and Vice President Kamala Harris. Here's a short clip from that hearing showing these White House records being introduced to the Senate floor. One of the other things I did was I, I did a open records for the, the White House access, and we had records that um, Ms. Willis and the mayor of Atlanta were at meeting with the vice president. Okay, and so this is the access uh, history. H how does that work? The White House keeps records of anybody that comes in and has any kind of official meeting for sure? Yes, and, I, and my understanding is it's, it's highly regulated who, who can access the White House, and so you have to apply in person or apply ahead of time, and then they give you a, a time when you make the appointment, and they give you a time when you're allowed to be in and when you have to be out by, and they track you. And I mean, that makes sense. They don't want anybody you know lingering in the, in the White House, um, but but they, they keep that. And so these are, they're called WAVE records, I believe is what they're called, um, and I'm not sure what that's an acronym for, but um, they're publicly available. They're open records. And this record that's shown on the screen shows Fonnie Willis was a visitor with V. POTUS, I presume that's Vice President of the United States? Yes. Yes, yeah. it was. And what was the date of that back in, was that February sometime of 23? February 28, 2023. Is that before the indictment? Yes. Okay. Uh, any further explanation of why Ms. Willis was meeting with the Vice President of the United States? No. And so, as you saw in that video, Ms. Ashley Merchant, who is the lawyer for one of Trump's co-defendants, she was able to file a public records request to the White House and obtain the log that she showed up on screen showing that on February 28th of 2023, Fannie Willis came to Washington, D.C. in order to meet with Kamala Harris. According to that record, the meeting took place somewhere in either the side lawn or the tent of the White House, and it was a long meeting. It was about five and a half hours long, going from 6.30 all the way up until nearly midnight. And the timing of this particular meeting is very important, which becomes quite evident when we look at a timeline of the events leading up to the actual RICO charges. All the way back in February 11th of 2021, basically about a month after the events of January 6th, Fannie Willis sent letters to the governor of Georgia, as well as Georgia's secretary of state, telling them to preserve certain documents related to a matter of high priority that her office was investigating. Meaning that the investigation into President Trump began as early as February of 2021. Now, for the first year, a lot of it was taking place completely out of the public eye, behind closed doors. However, on November 2nd of 2021, it appears that the investigation was taken to the next level. Because on that date, 
Ms. Fanny Willis appointed Mr. Nathan Wade to be the special counsel in that particular case. You then fast forward two months to January of 2022, and that was when Ms. Fanny Willis impaneled a grand jury and she began forcing witnesses to give testimony. Now, the grand jury was quite active during the year, during 2022. They interviewed about 75 different witnesses. The Secretary of State had to testify before the grand jury. Uh, a number of Trump's lawyers were called to testify. Rudy Giuliani became a target of the investigation. Senator Lindsey Graham, he was forced to testify before the grand jury. Basically, they were quite busy. And amidst all this, it appears that semi-regular meetings were taking place between Fannie Willis's team and the White House. According to billing records that were recently made public as a part of Nathan Wade's divorce scandal, well, on May 23rd of 2022, amidst the backdrop of the grand jury doing their thing, well, Mr. Nathan Wade had an eight hour long meeting with the White House counsel. Then you fast forward six months and on November 15th of 2022, President Trump officially entered the 2024 presidential race. But here's where things get interesting. Because three short days after President Trump officially announced his candidacy, Nathan Wade had another meeting at the White House. This meeting took place on November 18th, and it's not exactly clear who he met with, and we have no idea what was discussed during that meeting. But coincidentally, on that very same day, the U.S. Attorney General, he came out and he assigned Mr. Jack Smith to be the special counsel investigating President Trump in another case, the case that eventually became the January 6th case. That is, if nothing else, an amazing coincidence. Regardless, 2023 rolls around, and in January, the grand jury is dissolved because they've completed their work. Then on February 16th, Fannie Willis released part of the grand jury's report to the public, which said, among other things, that the grand jury recommended appropriate indictments for the crimes that were committed. However, interestingly, those indictments did not come for a while. Instead, what we now know is that 12 short days after releasing part of that grand jury report, Fannie Willis herself went to Washington, D.C., and she met with Kamala Harris at the White House for about five and a half hours. Now, what they talked about is anyone's guess. The only thing we do know is that about six months after that meeting, President Trump, as well as 18 of his associates, were indicted under Georgia's anti-racketeering law. And so there you have it. That is the full timeline of events, or at the very least, that's the full timeline of events we've been able to piece together based on currently publicly available data. For all we know, there might have been many, many, many more meetings that took place between Georgia state level prosecutors and the White House. And for your reference, we here at the Epic Times, we are currently in the process of submitting our own records request to the White House in order to see whether we can uncover more meetings that took place. If we find anything, I'll let you know right away. Also, in regards to the meetings that we already know about, well, we here at the Epic Times, we did reach out to both the office of Ms. Fannie Willis as well as the White House for comment, but for some reason, neither of them have gotten back to us as of yet. If they do, I will let you know. And so that is thus far what we've been able to uncover. If you'd like to go deeper into this timeline of events, I'll throw my research notes down into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that as you're making your way down there to the description box, take a short detour to smash those like and subscribe buttons so that this video can be shared out to ever more people and the truth be spread far and wide. All right, just to pause here for a super quick moment. Here's a question. Why is it that we live in such an advanced era of human history? in terms of both technology as well as medical breakthroughs, but you still have millions and tens of millions of Americans who are more unhealthy and more overweight than ever before. Well, according to board certified physician, Dr. Amy Lee, who is also an expert nutritionist, one of the main reasons is that currently three harmful foods are being passed off as health foods all over the country. These three particular foods can cause weight gain, clog your digestive tract, deplete your energy, wreck your skin, and they're even banned in other countries. And yet, here in the US, they're not only legal, but they're actually being promoted as being healthy. If you wanna find out what these three fake health foods are, just head on over to threeharmfulfoods.com forward slash Roman B. Over on that page, Dr. Lee explains how to stop and reverse the damage to your body by simply learning which three foods to avoid and how to spot them when you're shopping. And by doing so, you can experience easier weight loss, smoother digestion, and more energy. And so again, that's the number three harmfulfoods.com forward slash Roman B. I'll also throw the link down into the description box below. And then lastly, 
If you enjoyed today's episode and you're just thinking to yourself, man, I love this content, I just wish Roman would publish more episodes every single week. Well, you're in luck because I do. Over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform, I publish anywhere between one to three exclusive episodes of Facts Matter every single week, usually on topics that are unfortunately too spicy for here on YouTube. And so if you'd like to get access to those exclusive episodes, including a huge backlog from the last three years, well, now's a great chance because the Epic Times is running a phenomenal sale. Just 25 cents a week for the whole year, which if you do the math, works itself out to just be a single dollar a month. And so if you would indeed like access to all those exclusive episodes, Episodes, including a huge backlog from the last three years, well, you can take advantage of that sale by clicking on that link right there at the top of the description box below. Click on that link, it'll take you to the sale page where you can try the Epic Times for again just a single dollar a month. I hope that you do, and I hope that you join us over at the Epic Times website. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and most importantly, stay free.